Okay, so the bit of software I found is called MU Lab. So if you just type into Google MU Lab, MU Tools, go to Downloads, and then depending if you're running 32 bit or 64 bit Windows, I've got 64 bit, and just wait for that to download. Okay, while you're there, go to ASIO for all. Again, top one. I think that's the only one. There we go. ASIO for all English. And wait for them to download. Okay, through the magic of computer wizardry, these are now downloaded. So start off with um, installing ASIO for all. Yes, you want to run that. Just follow the wizard. Next, accept. Next, next, install. And that's you done. And then the next thing is just to extract. That will take a little while. And that's almost finished extracting now. OK, there we go. So at this point, all I have done is downloaded the two programs installed ASIO for all and extracted MULAB and I've also already got my controller keyboard plugged into my laptop via USB. So you have your Akai plugged into your laptop already. So first thing to do, just go into that folder. It doesn't install anywhere, it literally just runs from this folder. Double click MULAB and yes you want that to run. There's a bit of an agreement statement there. Just click I agree. Okay, so we've got some choices to make here. So your audio driver type, change that to ASIO. The audio driver name, change that to ASIO for all. You can have a quick look at your inputs and outputs. It's not really worth doing and then click OK and that is you. Configuration done. Step one. Okay so you see when this program loads for the first time it's the stave is already moving so we just press this button up here. Actually I'll let you see the whole screen. There we go, that's better. Stave's already moving, so just stop that. We don't want that to move, it's just annoying. And also, it's got some instruments preloaded. Just delete them. Okay, totally blank. The first thing we do after we do that is go into MU Lab and go into MIDI Setup. Input port 1, click on that and choose your Akai keyboard here. Mine's called Legacy Keyboard because of the drivers I'm using, but you should see your Akai keyboard. Choose that. Click OK. OK, so as I said before, first thing you do, go into MU Lab, Audio Setup. Now, you need to choose ASIO and ASIO for all. However, in order for the sound of this to be recorded by the software, I will need to choose the MME audio driver. But don't you choose that one, you choose the ASIO driver and just click OK. And also, 
the MIDI setup, make sure your keyboard is chosen in input port 1. OK, that should be us. Again, delete these tracks. We don't want those. So that's you with a blank canvas just now. So the first thing that we want to do is choose an instrument. Let's go bass. Pick the first one. Now, hopefully, if you press one of your keys, you should start to hear some music. Now, this program has got loads of free sounds. Which I can let you go through at your leisure. Um, not only does it have basses, it's got a great set of drums. Who's that? Uh, Roland 808 kit. So, let me just take you around here a little bit. This part here, at the top, is kind of like a tape recorder. Play, and then just click on it again to stop, rewind, and that's your record button. Just now we've got no instruments selected, so there's nothing to see. Um, this part here is for loop. So what we're going to do just now is just select an instrument. Let's go for a bass first of all. What's this sound like? That'll do. So hold down the mouse, drag it across here, and then just let it go. You've now got your bass selected and this screen that's popped up here is all of the things you, you can configure with your bass but do not worry about that just close that you still have your bass selected if you press your keyboard you'll still be able to hear your bass so the the loop part here if you select loop, all it's going to do is go from this is your first bar, second bar, third bar, and fourth bar of music. Once it gets to the fourth bar, it's just going to repeat back to the first. It's a great place to start, so just leave it there. So if you want to record some bass, click your record button. It'll do a little bit of an intro, and then you can do some bass sounds. See how it went back to the beginning there? Now if I just stop the recording, you'll hear your bass sound. Now it's not very tidy. The reason it's not tidy is because, let me just stop that, the reason it's not tidy is because I had to choose that different driver. If it was the ASIO driver, it'd be much more um, on the beat. So what I can do, however, is I can go to the edit here and I can just drag the notes into time. As I want them. Now that's not going to be really in time, that's going to be really just off time, but I'll show you the difference of what it sounds like now. Okay, now have a listen to this. your bass part. Go back to compose. Next we need some drums. And new drum. Go for starter kit. Just drag that across. Drop it there. 
Again, you don't have to keep this window up. You can just close this. But when you start to press the keys, much easier, however, if we go into Edit, select Starter Kit, and I can just program my drums in here. Bar three, bar four. Okay, and we need some claps. We need a crash. So it sounds like we have one there. Then we'll have a little bit of a alternative at the end. Okay, so if we play that all together, it should sound like this. getting somewhere. Okay, next, let's go back to Compose and let's get a pad. Pads. What do some of these sound like? Dark choir. <laughs> Across, drop it there. Um, same again, you can just close down that, don't want it. And go to compose, back to the very beginning, click record. <laughs> Okay, lastly, we need a lead. So just go to leads. Um, let's just pick the first one, a space journey. Yep, that sounds cool enough. So we can pick up space journey, drag it across, and drop it here. Yet again, the big panel. When you get more familiar with what you're doing, you can start to edit a lot of the sounds in here. But just now, just close it down. You don't need it. Um, rewind. Have a think about what we're going to play. I'll do. Okay, so let's click record. in the right driver. This time, this will probably go horribly wrong, but what I want to show you is what's called um, quantize. So what we can do is we can select all of the notes that we've just recorded. Now see this part here where it says 1 over 16? This is how many notes that you want in a bar. We don't want 16 notes to quantize this. I think we could probably get away with eighths but as I say this might go horribly wrong so I'll set that to eighths 
I've select all of this. Now I'll just hover over one of the ones I've selected and right click and choose functions. See that quantize notes? If I press that, you should see the notes shuffle into different positions. There we go. So let's see how horrible that sounds after I've quantized it. I don't think it's going to sound better. But we can maybe manually move the notes around. So rewind and play. <laughs> was this one here. We just need to move that. Oh, we don't want to move them all. Let's just select one, move him out a little bit. And I think we are pretty much bang on. So... Now another thing you can do when you're in this setting is you can select a note and then just extend the time of it a little bit. There we go. So let's do it for these ones here, and that one there. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, just rewind that. Right, the last thing you could do is maybe add some effects. Now I'm going to wing this because I'm not brilliant at doing this um, but let's see if you right click in there on the Space Jam, the Space Journey lead and choose add subtrack. Okay, right click um, okay, here we go. Double click on that little symbol and then go across here and on the second one down, choose the little down arrow. You see that? Now this time we want to choose... Let me see... Devices, Effects, MU verb. Okay, now we do need to keep this window up this time because we're going to choose this little arrow. We don't want audio gate and we want phaser. Choose phaser. Again, you don't need to worry about anything in there just now. However, what we do want is to hear what that sounds like with a phaser on the lead. So here we go. Excellent. Did you hear the difference in that? So again, what you can do with a phaser or any of your effects when they're up is record it, but you can play around with the resonance or in fact any of those settings. So what we're going to do is turn the resonance right down to the bottom. We're going to start the recording and as it progresses we're going to turn up the resonance. So here we go. Okay, hope that gets you started. <laughs>